showing you how to work up this really nice big cozy plaid blanket now this is what I call a faux plaid because it's worked a little bit differently than our regular plaid we don't carry any yarn and we don't have ends to weave in so it's really fun and easy to do so let's start off here with telling you what you're gonna need okay so for this blanket I'm using worsted weight super value yarn and I'm working with two strands held together so I have some balls rolled off just to make it easier to show you how to do it I'm buying bulky yarn I've just combined two strands together to give a bulky to get a bulky blanket without using bulky yarn so that's up to you you can use super bulky yarn or you can just put together two strands colors that I'm using. I'm using a dark gray or you could use black. It's really charcoal and deep. I'm using true gray and I'm also using white and I've just pre-rolled these balls to do my swatch for you to get you going on this pattern. You're going to need four balls of each color okay and on one ball there's approximately 426 yards 389 meters or seven ounce so this is the size and because we're working from two strands you want two balls to work from at all times and taking the center pull is really helpful as well so that you're not getting tangled so that's that's important so if you buy four of each color that's going to get you a big this is a really big blanket it's about 56 by 56 if you want to make a smaller size blanket I will show you the multiples to chain uh, to get started you'll need a 10 millimeter crochet hook so this is an N and this is a Susan Bates crystallite hook and I'll have links in the description box as to where you can purchase these hooks you'll also need a needle for bulky yarn so just make sure it has a large head on it and this is optional but I will add a garment tag at the end to my blanket just a personalized tag so you'll need some embroidery thread and a smaller needle for sewing on the tag and the tassels on this blanket are optional you don't have to add them but I'll show you at the end of the video how to make your tassel Again, with a slip knot and then just put that on your hook tighten it up now if you're making a, the blanket that is 56 inches wide you will chain 126 now for this video, I'm only doing a swatch to show you the pattern because it gets quite cumbersome working with such a large piece. So the pattern is worked in multiples of eight plus six. So you can alter the size of your blanket based on that pattern. Okay, so let's start out chaining eight. One, two, three, four, five six seven eight and again one two three four five six seven eight and now we'll chain six one two three four five Six. total of 22 chains so if you're altering the size of your blanket you'll want to measure out your chain and that will be approximately how wide of a blanket you'll end up with so now we're gonna work in the fourth a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook so one two three four so to double crochet yarn over go through the chain pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we'll work 
a double crochet in each of the next two chains. And now we'll chain four. One, two, three, four. And we'll skip the next four chains. One, two, three, four. And into the fifth, we'll work one double crochet in each of the next four chains. So there's one, two, three, and four. And then we'll chain four. One, two, three, four. Skip four chains. One, two, three, four. You should have four chains remaining at the end and we'll double crochet in each of the remaining four chains. One, two, three. So as long as you chain out your start in multiples of eight plus six, you should end this way. And if you're making a blanket 56 inches wide, you want to start with a chain of 126 and you'll end up with 124 stitches. I'm ending up here with, uh, with 20 stitches, okay? Four times one, two, three, four, five. So now we will change our color on the last double crochet. So pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're changing to true gray, our lighter gray color. So we pull through with the light gray. And now we're not cutting the dark gray because we're going to carry the yarn up along the edge so we don't have any cutting or extra weaving to do, which is what makes this pattern really great because when we do work with the regular plaid of three colors, we're having to cut one color at the end of every row, which can be a lot of weaving at the end. So now we'll chain four. One, two, three, four. We're gonna skip over the four double crochet and we're gonna work one double crochet in each of the four, the next four skip chains two rows below. So that's these chains down here. So yarn over. and double crochet in each of those skipped chains below. And now we'll chain four. skipping over the next four double crochet and now we're working over this chain down into those skipped chains two rows below. There's one, two, three, And now we'll chain four, one, two, three, four, and we'll slip stitch. Sorry, we'll do a single crochet in our turning chain. And whoops, we need to change color there. So we'll do a single crochet in the turning chain 
but we just pull up a loop. We drop off our light gray now and we bring in the white. So pull through with your white yarn and then turn and move only the light gray over. Now we'll chain three. So we chain three and our chain three now counts as one double crochet here throughout the pattern. So we don't do a double in the first, we're just gonna work a double crochet in each of the next three skip stitches, two rows below. So double crochet in the first, second, and the third here. And now we'll chain four And then we'll work one double crochet in each of the next four skip stitches. So working over the chain. So with this method, we don't have to carry any yarn throughout. And when we're working with bulkier yarn, it makes it just a little less bulky and simplified. One, two, three, four. Once you get the hang of this pattern, it's really simple and really quick to work through. And if you want a copy of the PDF to work along with, that is available for purchase in my Ravelry, Ravelry or Etsy shop. Link will be in the description box. Okay, and here's our last stitch here. And now we're gonna change back to our main color. So we're gonna drop off the white. Just making sure I'm not grabbing the wrong tails and pull through and see, we're just carrying that up along and we will finish with a single crochet border that's gonna hide all of this pulling up the yarn and there's like no weaving which saves so much time. So now we'll turn and we chain four to get across those four double crochet. One, two, three, four. And then we'll work one double crochet in each of the next four skipped stitches, two rows below. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll chain four, one, two, three, four, And we'll chain four, one, two, three, four, and we'll single crochet in that turning chain. And we won't yarn over, we'll change color. So at this point, we're back to the gray, the light gray. So yarn over and pull through with the light gray. And we'll chain three. One, two, three. And now we'll work one double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Our chain three counts as a double crochet. 
So counting the chain three, we have four there. And then we're just gonna keep working this pattern. So two, three, chaining. We're always chaining to get across. And then we're working double crochets in the skip stitches. So this is a really um, great pattern to sit and just watch TV. Just really once you get onto the pattern, it's really simple. It's just a good way to pass the time and just enjoy crocheting while watching movies, watching Netflix. And as your blanket grows, it's really nice and cozy just to lay it on your lap and work with it. And we're just getting to the end. So work one double crochet in each of the next. And you don't even have to think really about what color you're changing to at the end because you'll all it will always be there to pick up so now we know we're going to the white because we're attached here with the white so it's really rather simple and you just keep repeating this and you can keep going until you've reached your desired length for my blanket I've made it a square so I've just continued until I have 56 inches and I want to end, you want to end on the same as you begin with. So your main color is the dark gray. So end with the dark gray and just continue as long as you want. And it will be approximately 56 inches if you're making the blanket. Work away. This is, this is a project that will take a little bit of time. And when I get to the final row, I'll meet you back up again and show you how to finish off. Okay. So... I've come to my last row here and we're going to finish the blanket off now. So my blankets ended up being about 56 inches by 56 inches. So what we're going to do is chain two. And now I'll work a half double crochet. in each of the next three stitches. And then we'll work a single crochet in each of the next four stitches. See how that's finishing off that edge and then half double crochet in each of the next four stitches. and a single crochet in each of the next four. And you're just gonna repeat this all the way along just so we can finish off our edge. And then we're gonna do a border around the blanket. Okay, so I'm just coming to my very last um, stitch here. So here's our turning chain. And we'll do a half double crochet into that. Now you're going to chain one and what we're going to do now is start single crocheting down along the edge and as you can see we've carried our yarn so that we only have this tail and I would just crochet over this tail as you go so you just want to evenly space your single crochet stitches down along this edge. And always pull back to see if it's looking like you're maybe getting too many and it's looking wonky or that it's pulling too tight.
Okay, so I'm just gonna continue working down my side as I've been going. If you take that larger whole area, which is a bit, if you put two single crochet into each of those spaces, we're looking like we're getting a nice even border. Okay, so I've worked all the way down my edge here. I'm just getting to my corner. So I'm going to add an extra single crochet into that corner space. And then work one single crochet in each stitch along the bottom. I'm getting to my other corner. I'm also going to add two single crochet. You can even do three if you want a, um, a nice sharp edge. And then we'll just begin now working down the other side of the blanket. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the corner. Put a single crochet in that last space and then just slip stitch to the very top of that first stitch to join. Now I'm just going to fasten off and you can make sure we get all those ends weaved in. So you'll just need a yarn needle that has a big end on it. There's lots of different styles. Just make sure that it's large enough that you can get your two strands through or bulky yarn, whatever you're using. And then when we're weaving, we just want to make sure that we weave one way and then weave back in the opposite direction so that you're sure to secure that end. Okay, so the fringe is optional, but if you want to add some long strands of fringe to the bottom of your blanket, I've pre-cut strands that are 18 inches in length. And for a nice thick fringe like this, I'm using six strands. So there's six. And now how to attach the fringe. You just want to fold your fringe in half. And I'm putting my fringe in every other stitch along the edge of the blanket. And I'm just doing the one edge. You could add fringe to both ends. So I just pull it through and then I take my yarn, pulling it through and knotting it like that. And you'll just want to repeat this all the way across okay, the so edge. I'm just going to show you what I like to do with my fringe. So this is my steamer here. I absolutely love my steamer. It's such a great investment. So as you can see, mine are pretty good actually. If you pull your strands from the outside of the ball instead of the inside, they will not be as wrinkly looking. So you just want to take your steamer and steam. And this is just going to relax all the fibers and they'll really hang nice and straight. I like brushing through them with my fingers when I'm holding the phone with my one hand. I like to hang it over a chair or my island, just something to let them hang because then once I'm done steaming, you just know then all of, everything's straight. And so you'll get a nice even trim when you go to trim these. 
So as you can kind of see already how straight the ones I've steamed look compared to these. Once I've got everything nice and steamed, I then go in with a really good pair of scissors. And I just start trimming my ends across. Makes a little bit of a mess on the floor, but you can just sweep that up when you're done. So this is just how I get a really nice finished straight edge on my fringe. Okay, so if you want to add a garment tag, just use some embroidery thread, your needle, and you can just attach it wherever you want. the holes push it back up go back down then I just knot it and then just trim it. 